Falk here to say a special thank you to everybody out there that uh, digs my stuff. Uh, and I, I got over 400 subscribers yesterday with that Tommy Thayer video I put up. And 98% uh, of the people are leaving comments like, this is the funniest shit I've ever seen. And one guy wrote, this is the greatest thing on the internet. Well, actually, more than one guy. I mean, read those comments. They're awesome. 98% are awesome. 2% didn't really dig what I did there. So they were very, very upset. But then again, it's 2%. You know what 2 means? Shit. Doo-doo. So, uh, I also want to show you this. I brought this up on my live live feed the other day, so if those who didn't see it. I got this in the mail. It's uh, the new Ace Frehley uh, Spaceman vinyl signed. And look, remember that last video where I got the Ace Frehley vinyl signed? They sent me another one. They made a mistake like Amazon did. I got two of them. Actually, I'm lying. I only got one. This one didn't bring a vinyl. So they sent me the blue version. I still have it sealed. Oh, I'll unseal it one day. And uh, a lot of people are also asking me about the press conference on uh, End of the Road. And um, when I have a little time, I'll sit down and talk about it. Uh, I do have things to say about it and uh, and the tour dates and all that. I have a lot to talk about that stuff. So hopefully, you know, uh, my only day off this week is going to be Thursday. So if I have time Thursday, I'll make a video and share it with you guys. And uh, and also a very special thanks to everybody that dug my Larger Than Life Part 2. I told you guys. And when I keep a promise, I keep a promise. I said if I won the podcast poll, I'm going to put it up. And that's exactly what I did. And my computer still ain't working because of it. But I did it for you guys. So thank you so much. You guys fucking rule. And another thing I want to bring up, the last thing I want to bring up about this whole channel and KISS is uh, somebody brought it to my attention that I have more subscribers and views than the biggest KISS YouTube page. Uh, and this is not including the band KISS because, you know, come on, you can't compete with that. But... Uh, so, you know, I went and did my research myself and I was like, wow, I do have more subscribers and views than this. It blew my mind. And then um, I also went and looked at, you know, just about every other KISS YouTube page out there. And uh, yeah, I have more subscribers and views than them as well. So my uh, question to you guys is, you know, is there a KISS pot, uh, YouTube page that I'm missing that I did not see uh, that have more numbers and subscribers than me because I would love to know, you know, because, you know, it's, to me it's a big deal that uh, I have more subscribers and views than every KISS YouTube page out there except for um, the actual official KISS YouTube page. So I think that's really fucking cool. And I know I'm going to keep this video short. I'm sorry, but um, uh I'm going to tack in one little thing that I found out last night that I'm so fucking proud of. Uh, there's a documentary coming out in 2019 about thrash metal. And I'm talking, this ain't no Bobo documentary. This has Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, Testament, you know, you name it, Dark Angel, all, the, all these killer thrash bands, a documentary on them. And it's my music playing in the background. And my music is going to be featured in the actual documentary, but... The promo they released, it's only my music you hear in this whole promo. It's uh, my song Street Trash and Metal Massacre, The Ultimate Revenge. You hear it in the background uh, during the interviews and the little clips for this promo. And I want to show you all the promo and I'll, po I'll put a link below. If I forget, please remind me. Uh, because there's, uh, there's other DVDs, this uh, metal DVDs, uh, documentaries that the same company has released. So I can't be prouder. My band is on a fucking... Yeah, and in case some of you don't know, my band is also in a movie called Return of Newcomb High and Return of Newcomb High 2, which is a trauma picture. Uh, my music, my band's music is in that as well. How proud, how cool is that, guys? So uh, here's, the, here's the promo, and hopefully I'll see you guys soon to talk about End of the Road. And again, to the two percenters out there that don't like what I do, I'm not going away, bitch. Here's the promo. Back then, it was like we were all together as one. But it was just like, oh my God, there are people here like us. There are people here that look like us, that think like us, that smell like us. 
there was much more of a sense of community about it all, you know, and a support within the bands for each other. The scene that was in San Francisco was, was just maniacal and crazy as it was. This scene started to spread everywhere else. We played Ruthie's Inn, which like is a big thrash place, and uh, Legacy played there with Alex Skolnick was in the band, and we rocked that show. I mean, it was the best show Hawaii ever had. There were so many styles of music that were that were just flowing through all of these types of clubs. We truly stuck out. Bodies were just flying everywhere. It's like, wow, this is amazing. You know, I felt very much at home. I felt welcomed. But we didn't really have, you know a super shredder, you know, in, in heavy metal at that point in time. When I saw the metallic thing, that was a big eye-opener. I was like, wow, we're on to something here. This is something happening, you know? It had something special. It was a building and there was nothing like it. Metal was just getting just insane in early 83. It was just, it was just, the, the, the kids, everybody was talking about metallic and coming up. Every time I went to the shows, it was all dudes with like, Fight collars, sweating like I am right now. You know what I mean? Like, Whoa! it seemed like there was no girls in the audience at all. It was you go to show as a bunch of dudes in leather jackets. It's like, who wants to do this? It was all like kind of a macho thing, and so then if you kind of were makeup wearing dude, you were like a poser. You didn't go to an Exodus show with the peroxide hair pumped up like that. You just didn't do it because he'd single you out and go, "There's not a poser on the ground. I need you to kill him right now." And he go, "Kill, kill, kill." I don't know how many stages we set on fire or blew holes in the room. Well, I remember hearing for the first time uh, here in Exodus. Just the riffing, you know, it was so great. Because you never knew when you were going to see the next Metallica. We all jumped the shark. It wasn't our fault, but that's what happened. It was extremely exciting. It's really sad that it's gone. I just feel fortunate to have experienced that and been in the right place at the right time.